But uh, with that, we probably should return to the uh, pressing drama of the yes. New York Times. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Jonas. Getting back to the drama here, um, we featured this a little bit on That Park Place. I want to go ahead and, and share, it, share it here because, well, you know, we specialize in theme parks here. And, well, as Lou pointed out, I think you made an interesting connection here, Lou, as to uh, as to the power structure, the power dynamic that was taking place at this time in the company's history. Uh, take your take your minds all the way back, folks, to March of 2020. Uh, soon after Chapek is in the CEO role. Well, on the way back from the annual shareholders meeting, it says this Governor Gavin Newsom called Iger before announcing that he would restrict public gatherings in California because of COVID. But he thought Disneyland might stay open. The governor didn't want people to panic and he feared that they might if Disneyland were closed. Uh, very interesting because, well, we'll explain the dynamic later on, but uh, you'll recall that uh, it was Gavin Newsom who kept Disneyland closed for the amount of time that it was closed. Uh, but uh, it, it's interesting that the origins of this were actually Iger who actually wanted it to be closed. Iger argued to Mr. Newsom that keeping the theme park open was a bad idea given the health risks to both guests and employees. Oh my gosh. I just, this just dawned on me for some reason. Sorry to interrupt you. Uh, please, like, please. Lou, this is kind of like what you, I, so we yeah. were talking earlier, Lou, yeah. about like, you know, making the play for Pennsylvania Avenue. In my head, I was like, mm, maybe, maybe I could see that sort of as just a general, like, that's what executives do. Kind of like, that's what high school Boom. kids do. They go to college. This is that never. To me, yeah, this to me seems like politic. Like, oh, I'll tell yeah, you. Sure. Some, Close it's down never let us run the manual. Never let a crisis go to waste. Yeah, yes. exactly. That that just dawned on me right now. So I'm I'm on team. Yeah, he wants to be in the White House really bad. Lou and, team, whatever. That and is. this Give this was. We'll, we'll talk about the ramifications of this decision right here, but I think you're exactly right here, Spencer. I think this was uh, optically, not just for the company standpoint, but from his standpoint personally, uh, he, he definitely didn't want the company to to run a, a foul of the public perception at this point, because I think he really was considering a run for president at this time. Mr. Newsom later publicly praised Iger's advice and cooperation. Chapek didn't agree with the decision to close the parks, but he was furious that Iger had excluded him. The decision had nothing to do with Iger's creative mandate. And here's the thing, guys. The company at this point was still paying off not the debt, but the interest payments on that $70 billion acquisition of Fox. They mm -hmm. were still paying the, uh, the the fees to set up Disney Plus, and obviously it wouldn't turn a profit for, what, four years later? And uh, the company... The, oh, go the, ahead. What would eventually happen and how much with Hulu was mm -hmm. caused by that acquisition of Fox. Yeah, oh, exactly. Right. So, yeah, the, the financials regarding that decision were still were still uh, being and worked still out are. <laughs> and still are. That's true. So so there's obviously more debt coming. Uh, and now the, on the precipice of Disney losing all of their theatrical distribution with theaters closed, I think um, Onward had come out at this point just completely fail at the box office so you're not going to get any of that revenue and now the only source of revenue that you could actually get the theme parks are now going to be closed not because you made that decision but because Iger made that decision and here's how devastating it was folks for 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 the Walt Disney Company at this time uh, this was written by uh, the Orange County Register, as you can see, uh, but this was published in October of 2020. Remember, the Disneyland itself wouldn't open until April 30th of 2021, okay? And already by this time, Disneyland Resort faces $2 billion revenue loss during this coronavirus closure. This is what analysts had had, had estimated at the 216 day mark again it wouldn't open until 412 days of its closure and this wasn't just devastating for the company as one could probably uh, surmise here it was also and and you can you can see actually uh how devastating it actually was for the company right here with this announcement sorry i do apologize let me see if i have my notes here but the short version is the whole city suffers because all the restaurants, yes. hotels, gas stations, souvenir stands, uh, everybody loses money when it's shut down. <laughs> well, well, that's, I mean, well, you know, I, well people got to stay. I guess they got to stand up for all call the business. Elsa, all home. right, let's be honest about Elsa at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that took a, a really interesting turn there. But 98 extra. If, 
Um, if, you see, <laughs> if you see right here. OK, so it wouldn't just hurt the city. We'll get into the city ramifications. Let's remember, just put it this way, this Spencer. Right Spencer, this is for you. Hmm. Disney is not the only party in Orange County, California, interested in happy endings. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh boy uh well unfortunately there would be uh no amazing endings oh man I'm trying to trying to it's trying okay vash jonas is gone trying to bleach it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why i noticed yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh no it would be devastating to the company in october uh of that year uh right actually uh, near where that article was published that we just covered earlier they announced uh via josh diamaro a statement from him that they would be f uh laying off twenty eight thousand cast members and the culture of the entire disneyland resort would never be the same again and they wouldn't uh, hire a lot of them back. I believe they only hired about 50% on average of those custom, of those, uh, of those amazing cast members back. A lot of them had been there for 10, 15, 20 years and so forth, really established the culture that was passed down lovingly from Walt. All of that would be cut severely short right there. But uh, as Lou was pointing out there, the city's economic impact would be devastating, obviously. Disneyland had contributed at that point $8.5 billion to the economy of Anaheim. And now that's just shut off on a dime and had remained closed for, like I said, 412 days. Thousands of businesses suffered. I mean, tens of thousands of businesses suffered, many of them not returning. I believe there was a public works project that uh, was being funded directly because of the Disneyland Resort to create affordable housing. That was put completely on hold. It would have devastating ramifications for the city of Anaheim and uh, and and obviously, as we pointed out, the Walt Disney Company. And again, that was a decision that Bob Chapek himself couldn't make, even though uh, he was apparently the CEO. Uh, <laughs> so so the <laughs> getting all the blame became the, the heir only apparently. Yes. Yes. The oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. That. If the king's it's not just... in charge, then who's the king? Right. I mean, it's, it's absolutely Disney? Devastating. simple answer, Nolan. The queen. Anyway, uh. <laughs> also, the article also goes on about how he couldn't even decide uh, to furlough 90,000 uh, uh, employees of the theme parks, given that they that these uh, that these uh, theme parks would remain closed for an undisclosed amount of time. I don't think until it was uh, July that Walt Disney World even opened. And like I said, April 30th is when Disneyland opened. Iger overruled him on that decision as well. Couldn't actually do anything. And apparently uh, his his wife, Chapex, anyway, might have actually uh, gotten wind of this. Two months earlier when Chapek and Iger had appeared together on CNBC, Iger brushed aside a question about potential confusion for who was in charge. Bob is going to be running the company, Iger said. Oh, I'm sure. But now it seems that Chapek and Iger uh, were acting as though nothing had changed. Iger was still chief executive in all but name. Chapek's wife told him he was little more than Mr. Iger's lapdog. Man, that is. That Don't want to hear that from your wife. Don't want to hear oh, that from your wife. Oh, so bad, dude. That's so terrible. The lame duck CEO. Man, oh man, that is. Oh, that's rough. That's rough. But uh, oh, so it's it, okay it, if she says it, but we can't say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It is. I think it is appropriate for her to say it. That was a highlight from our live stream on that Park Place podcast. It's online, where the full stream can be found at the link in the description. But what about you? What were your thoughts on this particular story? Please let us know in the comments below. Like this video if you did like this video. Share us out as it helps us out tremendously against the YouTube algorithm. And thank you so much for watching. T three, bo. Please comment, like, and share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to That Park Place Podcasts Online, your source for exclusive content and highlights from WDW Pro, The Pro Show, and That Park Place for all the news that should be fun.